So today, starting my red hot pokers. Um, like everything else I paint, the texture is both my joy and my challenge because the texturing is never just a perfectly straight, smooth line, you know, that would make a poker. But I kind of like that because life is not always a straight, smooth line, you know? And um, trying to illustrate things that are a little more, oh, challenging, I guess, with hidden disabilities. I think it's kind of good that. I've got um, options here with my, my reds. So what I'm doing today is, um, I'm not sure if you can see the detail with the video, but I've applied texture on top of my previous paint. And um, so now I'm just using your basic red, I guess, really, to uh, get the first layer of the pokers. My, my uh, goal is to kind of build these up layer by layer with paint. Um, I don't always just rely on the texturing for uh, building up layer by layer. That's kind of like a physical build, but I also like to layer actual paint on and build up a totally different kind of texture with different colors and and uh, accents and stuff like that so you have to forgive me I'm a little bit tired today again kind of fighting a fever um, had to took my mom to some of her medical appointments today earlier so that was uh, chauffeur duty and Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> go to the lab, go to the doctor, go to the lab, go to the doctor. <laughs> it was kind of like that all day. <laughs> so, um, uh, probably she's tired, more tired than I am. But um, anyway, I'm just going to plug away here a little bit. Thanks for uh, joining me on this adventure. Um, anyway, once I get some of this basic red on, then I'll probably flip the canvas and make sure I like the uh, directional flow. This paint I kept pretty thick because I really don't want it to drip a lot. This basic red. Um, some of the colors that I'll use on top of the red it will have consistent, more consistent with the drip effect that I already had going on here. And again, this painting is to represent the kind of hidden disabilities that can cause you to be, well, I don't know how to say it, just to have a lot of pain and dizziness and um, discomfort with those kinds of issues, um, be it inner ear stuff, uh, inflammation, lupus. Oh gosh, there's so many different things that can cause pain and equilibrium problems and, you know, it's kind of where this, this painting is focusing, so. Lupus is a lot more common than you'd think, uh, maybe. I mean, if you have lupus, you probably know, but it's, um, it's one of the more challenging hidden disabilities because you can have so many different symptoms when you have lupus that other people wouldn't necessarily remark upon or even notice. Um, but it can seriously uh, impact your life with fatigue and pain, um, just kind of chronic and constant. Um, I have uh, pharmaceutical induced lupus symptoms. So although I test negative for the actual lupus disease, um, I've been diagnosed as having lupus symptoms as caused by all the medicines that I've taken my whole life. 
um, antibiotics in particular can really change your um, organs and, and uh, it can just they, they can just affect you in so many ways so many ways um, uh, so that's always a challenge antibiotics for me uh, tonight I'm starting a brand new antibiotic that I've never had before that's it's always exciting to see if I can tolerate it um, because there don't seem to be that many antibiotics that I can tolerate anymore, having taken so many my whole life, um, which is, of course, a catch-22 because I need them to stay alive. So it's always kind of a exciting, scary thing when I try a one I haven't had before because um, I'd love to be able to add another antibiotic to my list of the ones that I can take since I rotate oral antibiotics. Um, well, I take 15 days of oral antibiotics and 15 days of inhaled antibiotics every month. So it'd be nice, it's nice to be able to rotate the oral ones every couple months so that um, I don't build up too much of a tolerance to them. And I'm down to pretty much three that I can really tolerate easily. And that is not enough. <laughs> so if you have to take antibiotics all the time, three is not enough. So I'm kind of excited to start a new one tonight. Um, pray for me. Hold good thoughts that I can tolerate it and that it's effective and it knocks down some of the stuff in my lungs that likes to live there in my swampy swamp. And um, hopefully that means I'll have a new antibiotic in my roster, my list. So I'm hopeful. Um, hopeful that it will work out. brought a smaller brush. Normally I have a lot of brushes with me, but because of a other recent art project I was working on, um, a lot of my brushes are at home. So I will improvise. bit more of this red. Okay. Did you see my handshake just then? Yeah, I don't have a steady hand. So one of the reasons I don't usually try to do really fine line work in my paintings is because I can't. I just, I can't hold the brush steady. So, uh, even when I try, <laughs> that doesn't really work very well. <laughs> uh, I like to say my paintings have life because they wiggle. <laughs> but the truth is, um, I just don't have that kind of... Uh, mind to hand control um, anymore that uh, you'd have to have to be successful at really controlling a fine line kind of work. I just don't have it. Not sure I ever did, but I really don't have it now. So, so yeah. Okay, 
So my red hot pokers are not straight like pokers really would be in real life. But I didn't really intend for them to be straight. I just intend for the color to jump out with the texture. And as I layer more color on them, so that we get some uh, variation in the reds and the kind of, I'm going to use some orangey reds too. And uh, of course, the metallics. The metallics are very important to this project. Um, anyway. I'm kind of liking how this is looking though. I like it. Okay. Now, this color of red that I'm putting on this direction now is um, metallic red. So. I'm focusing a little bit of the metallic idea. And I don't mind if this drips a little, so I'm laying it on kind of thick. Because that will be consistent with the drippy theme of this painting, which I kind of like. Now, because of the texture, chances are it's going to drip downward just along the texture line. And I'm okay with that too. Like I said, I will turn the painting in a minute here and uh, apply a different color of red to the other, I don't know what you call it, the other side of the texture line, I guess. But for now, okay. oh, I need more of this. Something tells me you're probably looking in my ear right now. Sorry about that. Well, sometimes, I have to say, this is not the brush I would have chosen for this job, but I kind of like what it's doing, so happy accident, you know? Best laid plans of mice and men and all that. You just never know. But I like this one. This time when I flip the canvas, I'm going to flip it just completely um, vertical, just flip it up the other way. I guess that technically would be horizontally. I don't know. Wait a minute. i got to think about that. Yeah. I think I'm flipping it horizontally. Well, whatever looks like the top right now going to look like the bottom in a minute. That's what I'm doing. Oh look, I've got some drips going here and I didn't even know it. I like it. you guys, but sometimes just changing the angle of the brush, and I literally mean like the angle that it touches the canvas, makes all of the difference. Ok, 
Okay, so this paint that I'm putting on, this metallic paint, it looks kind of pink right now. I don't know if you can see that, but it will dry darker. Paint always dries darker. So, yeah. Okay, time to flip. All right, now don't laugh because, you know, we've already established that my flipping canvas skills are hilarious. Okay. Mostly because with texture, these weigh more than they look, and I am not strong, so I want to go this way. Okay. Whew. Not bad. I wouldn't say that was smooth, but it could have been worse. All right, a little more paint. And this is a different metallic red that's going to look really dull going on, but it also will dry darker. So I'm hoping for a real cool effect when all is said and done. Let's see. Worst that will happen is I'll paint over everything. <laughs> I've been known to do that, so I chuckle, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And this one I'm kind of more doing just certain areas. Um, see how that works for me. I'd love to say that I have all this planned out perfectly in my head before I even start. To a certain extent that's true. I visualize the painting the way I want it to look when it's done. But how I get there, that usually mutates as I work. Just not, very rarely do I paint something that just immediately starts and finishes exactly the way I planned. Um, I'm talking about execution, not vision. The vision is usually pretty, pretty clear. But the execution changes how I do it, how I do it. I guess. When these, uh, when this paint dries that I'm putting on, all these today, I'll probably go back, depending on, you know, how the different reds dry, I might go back and use one or the other to re-highlight a little. Um, that happens a lot. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I've got a painting that I, that I did for this series, first one I did. I really thought I was done with. And I was looking at it the other day, and I was like, huh. And I just had this, I don't know what to call it, this <laughs> inspiration, idea, something. Um, and I'm not done with that one yet. So, uh, probably work on that one next time we, we're here. the drip. 